with the Volvo Ocean Race well underway, we hone in on the precision-dependent role of a modern-day navigator. The first thing that makes a good navigator is probably a detailed level of knowledge of, of the subject. The second thing is preparation for any sailing you do. Uh, third thing is attention to detail. And finally, a, a really good understanding of numbers because most of the job now is data processing and, and analysing weather information. So you've got to have a good understanding of weather and a good understanding of data analysis to be a good navigator in the modern world. The Volvo Ocean Race is the world's toughest premier offshore series, an exceptional test of sailing prowess and human endeavor, which sees crews racing around the world over nine different legs, covering a distance of almost 40,000 nautical miles. The distance is vast and precision is key. Every minute counts. The responsibility of plotting a winning course sits with each team's navigator. Gone are the days of sextants and paper charts, as modern navigators are relying more and more on technology to help them predict the fastest routes in ever-changing conditions. The skill of the navigator is interpretation. We collect data every second um, and are able to, to analyze it as we go along. We've got sensors on pretty much everything, but the, the key sensors that we're interested in is the the heel of the boat, the boat speed, the direction we're heading in, and the angle and speed of the wind on the sails. What we do is we collect this data and we get thousands and thousands of data points and we're able to pinpoint exactly what we believe to be the optimal combination. First things first is you've got to get from A to B, find the way, navigate the boat safely, so avoid the bottom and uh, you know find a safe course. And then of course when it comes to racing, the weather plays a pretty massive part in it all. It's important to think in three dimensions as, as a navigator. Obviously, you're, you're sailing in two dimensions, but the clouds are happening in three dimensions and the wind is happening in three dimensions, so clouds have a massive impact on local weather. I do the best to, to go through the weather forecast and uh, look what the options are and, and sort of try and work out the fastest route and the safest route with respect to the fleet and you know our strategy and risk management. Though the data provided by technology has become key to the role, the interpretation of that data must be tempered by a navigator's skill, experience, and sometimes a hunch to plot that winning course. Their routing will run hundreds and hundreds of simulations looking for the quickest path. Sometimes it's really important to be on that exact path that the computer tells you, and other times it actually doesn't matter at all and there may be another reason why you should be further to the left or the right than, than the model shows. And so it's that interpretation that is important. Even with gigabytes of precise data at their disposal, the open sea is still an unpredictable beast. On a previous leg of the race, Team Vestas Wind were forced to abandon ship after they ran aground on a remote coral reef emphasizing the fundamental importance each navigator's expert judgment and experience still holds in a technologically advanced sport. The electronic charts are fantastic because you can carry the entire world on a single hard drive and they're vector based which means as you zoom in you can choose to have different amounts of detail shown on the chart and the danger there is if you don't realize that you're not on the correct scale that there is detail that may not be shown. We all saw what happened to the Vestas crew. Simply put, reading these electronic charts is at times very difficult, and certain details can be missed depending on how zoomed in you are. I think this must be what happened to our friends on the Vestas. Communication is essential. The information you give is obviously important, but you need to know that the message has been understood properly by all the crew. We all make mistakes because sometimes instructions can be misunderstood. So whilst the quality and results of our work are crucial, how we communicate on board the ship is just as important, be it with the skipper or with other crew members. You just have to be on your wits because it has the potential to go bad at any time. We're looking for ships. We're looking for fishing boats. We're trying not to hit the bottom. We're trying to stay out of the exclusion zone. And we're trying to, <laughs> trying to yacht race. And there's a transition in the weather. And the tide is uh, about to change. So how many things is that juggling at the same time? I guess it is stressful when you add it up like that, isn't it?